and welcome to the July episode of First Look ETF. I'm Stephanie Stanton with ETF Guide. It is great to have you with us. Coming up on today's show, big shifts in the global media landscape and a new ETF that taps into these fast moving trends. Plus, we'll analyze an innovative fund that plugs into the power of digitally connected consumers. And we'll explore a pair of ETFs providing exposure to the carbon credits and fixed income market. But first, we are thrilled to be broadcasting from the New York Stock Exchange for our July edition of First Look ETF. And joining me now is Douglas Jonas, head of exchange traded products. Hi, Douglas. It is great to finally meet you in person. Yeah. And uh, welcome to my house. It's great to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we are so excited. You know, we've reached the halfway point of 2023. Let's start with the latest update on ETF launch activity. Yeah, I mean, this this month was unlike any other, I guess, is the way I would kind of think of it, which is it was busy. Yeah. We had 37 new ETFs launched in the ETF industry bringing in $1.3 billion. Who's counting year to date? We are. Over 200 ETFs, 203 to be exact, ETFs have launched as, as of the end of last month with over 15 billion in net new cash flow. So the ETF indus industry continues to thrive right along with the, the broader equity markets. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you know, active ETFs have been gaining more and more favor with investors. So besides the tax benefits, investors also benefiting from the affordable cost of ETFs. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, active ETFs, we've been tracking it all year. 65% of all launches this year are active. So active ETFs continue to outpace index. But that really doesn't mean, you know, we talk a lot about active, but we should still talk about index. In fact, today's show, I think, is a perfect example. The people out there are still innovating. There are smart individuals that are building these really innovative indexed vehicles. You're going to see them today in some of the show. Two of the three are indexed. But you'll see when you look at the index, they're not traditional plain vanilla passive indexes. Right. They're really unique and in individualized, if you will. So we're still continuing to see it. But the reality is there are more and more active managers that are out there that are running funds and they're saying, hey, I want to be part of this ETF marketplace. Cash flow has been amazing. It's a new distribution model. As you mentioned, there's some tax advantages in here and, a, and I can often do this at a lower cost. So we would expect that continue to grow. But I think today's episode is going to be really unique and one of the better ones this year where we actually get into some of the real innovation that's happening in index. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting, innovating things happening. Before we let you go, are there any other key trends that you're watching right now for ETFs? I mean, we've talked about this all season. It's about education. The more investors learn about ETFs, the more they're adopting ETFs. And we've talked about it a few times. The New York Stock Exchange, we're focused on education. We're running across all the different social media. We have this TV show. And if anyone out there hasn't listened or been there, there to etfcentral.com. Please come visit us there. ETFcentral.com, we've got an innovator ETF, innovative ETF screener. Uh, it's intuitive. You can go learn about all the different shows and educational materials we're producing, including this show. You'll find it. And we have a new podcast there, all on ETFcentral.com. So many exciting things happening. And uh, one of our guests, I understand, is ringing the closing bell. Today's closing bell will be yeah. tuned. You'll probably see some ads as we're talking behind us as we start to get the floor ready to close the markets. Yeah, very exciting, even for a holiday week. Exactly. It's always something exciting at the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Douglas, it is great to see you. Uh, thank you so much and uh, keep up the good work. We'll see you soon. Just a quick reminder to watch First Look ETF on Amazon Fire TV and Roku. Also, we simulcast First Look ETF on uh, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music and other major podcasting platforms. Don't miss it. The advancement of mobile technology has created a global network of connected people. Not only are they communicating with each other, but they are also generating billions of dollars in e-commerce. A new ETF from Newberger Berman is plugged into this major investment trend. Let's welcome now Kevin McCarthy, Portfolio Manager at Newberger Berman. Hi, Kevin. It's Hi. great to have you with Thank us. Thank you for having me. So now more than ever, of course, consumers are plugged in, whether it's mobile phones or some other electronic device. I know my kids are all about that. <laughs> I'm just blaming them, but really I'm about that too. <laughs> um, tell us what is really driving this trend. So this is all about the connected consumer, and it's truly an extraordinary trend in that it is, sits at the intersection of two other very large trends. That's data growth and demographics. These two alone are very powerful drivers in and of themselves. But in unison, we think that they create very strong alpha generating potential. Let me just tell you a couple points on each. First on data. When consumers commerce and they connect with each other digitally, they leave behind what we call digital residue. 
In 2015, there were approximately 15 zettabytes of this data, this consumer residue created. By 2025, that'll be 175. So this is growing exponentially. And using large language models, such as the ones we have today, we can infer where the consumer is or what their behavior is like going to be like today and in the future. So then the second point is on demographics. The epicenter for all this connected consumerism is really taking place with the Gen Y and Z. That's the millennials and the Zoomers. And these, from a size-wise perspective, these, well, first of all, from a characteristic perspective, these, we call them the generally, the, the, the digitally native cohort or the Gen DN, because they were born with the devices in their hands, and it's how they communicate with the world. And from a size-wise perspective, they're equivalent in size to two baby boomers on top of each other. And importantly, they are just now on the cusp of their prime spending years. Over the next 15 years, their purchasing power will grow three times faster than that of the overall population. Wow, yeah, that is exciting incredible. stuff. So that's where the pieces come together. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, the new Burger Berman Next Generation Connected Consumer ETF, and your ticker there is NBCC. This is among your latest ETF launches. Tell us more about this fund's strategy and holdings. Great, yeah, so I've always, I've, I've covered consumer for nearly 25 years and I've always been fixated on the idea of trying to capture demographic alpha. In the past, we used consumer surveys, company disclosure, and even credit card data. But that's all simply just the output of what commercial behavior is like today. What we'd like to do is go further upstream to capture the signal and understand consumers' behaviors before they actually purchase. And so to do this, what we've done is we've combined, actually about six or seven years ago, our consumer franchise with our in-house data science team. And our, one of the co-PMs on this product is actually the chief data scientist at Newberger Berman. So we've put together proprietary models that help direct us to which brands are winning today and which brands will win in the future. Um, you know, we've got a lot of interesting stocks that uh, you know, we, we really love in the in the portfolio a couple come to mind first Montclair this is a you know obviously a, a very uh, old you know luxury European house that's hard to duplicate but for us the signal really uh, from the data perspective uh, livened up when we saw the uber wealthy and the young trendsetters starting to re-engage with the brand which was an opportunity for us to lean in um, another company is toast they do the payments processing uh, for restaurants and so they have the kiosks, the handhelds, and that sort of thing. But what really got us excited about this opportunity is that the demand for the product was coming from the bartenders, the general managers, the frontline workers. These are the ones that understood that this is good what turns the tables and drives efficiency. So we've got a lot of names like this. You know, DraftKings is another one in there. eDreams, it's a leading European uh, travel company. Zoetis, a pharma company for pet needs. Um, and even some mega caps like Nike and McDonald's who are in the right place at the right time for share gains. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a lot of diverse um brands in there. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So then how do you envision advisors and investors using an ETF like NBCC inside a diversified portfolio? I think the message to advisors and investors is threefold. The first is that you know, this is something that cannot be captured passively. It takes vast data analytics and really hands-on consumer understanding um, because what we're do, trying to do is capture the right exposure today. And to capture the right exposure today, you've got to be anticipating behavior for tomorrow. And then the second point I'd like to make is that the demographic tailwind is really just about to unfold. The average age of this Gen DN is 28. They're really on the cusp of their family formation, their asset gathering years. So this, although we're, you know, we're starting in the process, it's still in very early years. And then the last point is whether or not you want to think about this as thematic or um, you know, special situations, we think it's just smart investing. We want to go where the consumer is going. So that's why we're pretty excited about the opportunity. 
All right, Kevin McCarthy, thank you so much for taking some time with us here on First Look ETF. We appreciate it. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. The video streaming market is expected to have a brisk double-digit growth rate over the next few years, eventually topping $1.7 trillion by the year 2030. Here to discuss that, along with the new ETF targeting the fast-moving media and entertainment business, is David Ume, CEO of Cloudy and Portfolio Manager of the Tune ETF. David Welcome to the show. Pleasure to meet you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> First of all, uh, congratulations. I know you're Thank bringing you. the closing bell today. Yes. This is all very exciting. It is. It's a lot to take in at one time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it must be a little overwhelming. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, so the music and entertainment industry, of course, has seen some dramatic shifts in how it sells and distributes media. Um, what is different today and how big of an investment opportunity is it, in your opinion? Well, we saw the big spike in all music, media and entertainment during COVID. Um, and the market experienced a big correction afterwards. Um, but there were a lot of things, valuable lessons that were learned from that, um, how to handle an influx of that nature. And so as we move into this new era of technology driven by AI and new tools, uh, we're gonna see a shift like none other. And it's also gonna be fueled by globalization, right? All these different countries that will be starting to onboard these new technologies that we've had the opportunity to experience and enjoy here in the States. So that's, you know, we, when you think about that market, it's, it, it's set to only grow. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine it's pretty massive. Uh, so here you are, <laughs> the Cloudy Tune ETF. Your ticker is Tune. Tune, and we like Tune because it's like it's Tune In, right? Yeah. Tune. Like somebody who's watching this right now, what are they doing? They are tuning in. And so we feel as though music, media, and entertainment is something that people, you know, pun intended, tune into. And so what better ticker than two? Yeah, we, we love the name. Um, this fund is designed to capture those opportunities, as we talked about, in the world of uh, music, media, and entertainment. So break it down for us a little bit more. Um, give us uh, all the details about two. It's a thematic ETF, sector driven. Um, and when it comes to thematic ETFs, 80% of all companies in the portfolio uh, are tied to the theme. Now with that remaining 20%, you can color outside of the lines a little bit, right? But since our overall investment strategy is what we just talked about, we examined a different way to incorporate that remaining 20%. And so what we did was we looked at streaming as a whole. We aggregated the data from streaming and we ran a regression looking at the historical movement of streaming and the change in streaming. And what we found was that when we matched that with the S&P 500, the S&P 5000, you would notice that there were interesting companies that would be performing well when streaming seemed to be spiking. And those companies might not have had anything to do with music, media, or entertainment. And we thought that that was very interesting. So when you look at the holdings and you look at the, the, the portfolio, you might see like a data company, you might see a biotech company, you might see a health tech company, and it still is tied to our theme because it's correlated with music consumption patterns. Interesting. Yeah. I, I would never think that some of those sectors that you mentioned would yeah. have a tie to music. Yes. I mean, well, it's, I don't know if they knew it either. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why data is so beautiful, right? With data, you can really look at patterns and analyze rhythm. And so it's Tune, obviously it's called Tune, but it's not just music oriented. You've got media, you've got entertainment in there. Um, can you give us any little sneak peek of some of the, the names we might see inside there? Yeah, so you'll see a Netflix, you'll see a Disney, right? With Disney has ESPN and things of that nature. Um, you'll have an Adobe, right? Adobe is literally tied to media, right? When, you, when I think of all graphics, when I think of design, when I think of powerful illustrations that are displayed via media, companies like Adobe, they power creators to do that. Um, but you also have like Universal Music Group, you have Warner, you have Spotify, you have Tencent Media out of Asia, um, and then some Korean companies as well. So it's a global portfolio, and that's some of, some of the holdings in the ETF. Yeah. Um, how do you see investors and financial advisors using a fund like Tune inside a diversified portfolio? Well, what we found is that there's a lot of white space for that diversification. Um, instead of them, you know, picking individual companies, this provides a vehicle where they can get that allocation with with one drop, right? With one, with one product, with one in instrument, pun intended. And so our goal is to work with asset managers all over and teach them about tune, teach them about the investment strategy and allow them to have a beat to this eruption in this market, you know, through our vehicle, so. And if you want to just be cool. <laughs> if you, and, and, and right, and so with retail, a lot of people, it. a lot of people, this might be their first foray into music um, yeah. or into finance, yeah. right? And so, 
uh, if they can do it through the lens of music, I think it's really cool. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a really great awesome. it's a great way to build a bridge between music and finance. Absolutely, I love it. Oh. David, thank you so much thank for joining you. us here on First Look ATF. Yeah. Good luck to you. Me Good luck too. on the closing bell. Yes, ma'am. We appreciate right. your time. The fixed income market and carbon offsets are two areas targeted by a pair of new ETFs from Global X. Here to discuss these funds and their strategies is Chandler Nichols, product specialist with Global X ETFs. Hi, Chandler. It is great to have you with us. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, we're so excited. So the dramatic uptick in interest rates has been historical. What are some of the challenges now facing fixed income investors? Yeah, I'd say from a, from a market's perspective, uh, fixed income markets, we saw the Federal Reserve just announced um, after, have, after the rapid pace of interest rate hikes from uh, the previous year. They've announced a pause, but they're also telegraphing the potential for future rate hikes moving forward. So we think investors are potentially, you know, at uh, an interesting dichotomy where they're trying to decide, do I want to go longer on the duration curve? Do I want to go shorter on the duration curve? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot, a lot going on. A lot of people have a lot of different opinions about what's happening with the market. So the Global X one to three month T-bill ETF, your ticker there is CLIP. And then the Global X Carbon Credit Strategy ETF, that ticker NTRL Natural. These are new additions to your ETF lineup. Each of these funds has a little bit different of a unique strategy. Uh, break them down for us, starting with CLIP. Yeah, so uh, CLIP, it's a one to three month T-bill ETF in terms of its strategy. It's tracking an index that's specifically honing in on those particular portions of the yield curve. The um, T-bills that have uh, maturities over one month, but maturities of under three months. So specifically that portion of the yield curve. And we believe right now, just based on the current market environment, high, rate, uh, high rates, 5% plus yields in those segments of the yield curve, you can't go wrong there. Uh, so we believe it's still an attractive part uh, of the space and is why we launched that ETF. And the premise to launching that strategy is also to provide um, access for to put power back into the investors' hands in order to help them manage their portfolios as, as they see fit from a duration and credit uh, perspective. So um, priced at seven basis points, we think it's competitively priced in the markets. Yeah, and then NTRL, what's the strategy there? Yeah, so NTRL is our carbon credit strategy. Uh, we launched that in May and uh, we're very excited for that one as well. It's a younger area of the ETF ecosystem. It's the ecosystem uh, for US listed products uh, is roughly under a billion in assets under management. So it's newer, but growing. And we wanted to uh, position a product within that landscape. Priced at 39 basis points, we also believe it's competitively priced. It is an index It is an index tracking strategy, and it's meant to be broad-based. It's meant to be an access vehicle for investors in order to obtain a level of access to the uh, to the key uh, carbon allowance markets, uh, like the EU is the, being the largest, uh, all the way down to like the California carbon allowance markets as well. So then with that being said, how do you envision advisors and investors deploying an ETF, ETFs rather like CLIP and NTRL inside a diversified portfolio? Yeah, so we'll start with CLIP first. CLIP, it's a, it's a very um, systematic strategy honing in on that short duration part of the yield curve. We think it could be utilized in two key, two key fashions. One, excess cash reser uh, reserves, being able to put cash to work in uh, a strategy like uh, CLIP, you're getting exposure to you know, US uh, AAA rated treasuries. Um, and then also potentially as a risk management tool. So having that, having a nice clean slate of minimal duration risk and minimal credit risk can allow in, um, financial advisors and clients to you know, potentially um, you know, lower the duration in their, in their portfolios and, and the ways that they see fit as well. So it could potentially serve as like a strategic allocation tool. Um, as far as our carbon credit strategy, the unique thing about carbon allowances is that they're correlations to other asset classes, such as equities, fixed income, and even other commodities, tend to be lower uh, historically. So we believe it can be just another um, tool in the toolkit to be a diversifier in a portfolio uh, within uh, like an alternatives or commodity sleeve um, of a portfolio. So that's how we see those two strategies being used. Diversity, always a good word to hear these days. Definitely. <laughs> Chandler Nichols, thank you so much for stopping by here on First Look ETF. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, appreciate it. And that does it for today's episode of First Look ETF. If you enjoyed the show, tell us in the comment section below and by hitting the like button. A big thanks to all of our guests, along with Douglas Jonas and the team here at the New York Stock Exchange. Be sure to check out ETFcentral.com to learn more. I'm Stephanie Stanton with ETF Guide. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.